Atomic Spectra. So Atomic Spectra, Atomic Spectra is uh or are produced when atoms emit or absorb energy. So ladies and gentlemen, you should understand that whenever there is energy emission or energy absorption by an atom, so generally a spectra of light are produced. And each element has a unique spectra. And very really interestingly, ladies and gentlemen, what I wanted us to understand here is that in atomic spectra, whenever energy is absorbed or energy is emitted, so therefore uh, electrons generally move from one energy level to another. And the movement of those electrons from one energy level to another is what actually leads to the generation of producing a unique spectra. So that is why each and every element has its own unique spectra, allowing for identification and analysis. So ladies and gentlemen, this atomic spectra is a technique in, uh, in chemistry and biochemistry that use in identification of an element based on their unique spectra. So the spectra produced by the atom can be continuous spectra, it can be line spectra or a band spectra, but it depends on the material and the conditions. Like for example, a high like a hydrogen atom with a single electron in it is lowest energy shell. So look at it. This is uh hydrogen atoms with it is electrons and it is outermost shell. So it only have one shell. So, but there are other shells available and with those the right kick. So, of course, in the hydrogen atoms, it's not that because we know that hydrogen has only one shell. But that is to tell you that apart from that one shell, there are also electro, there are also other electronic shells. There are other shells that are, that, that are free, that those, that do not have electrons. So the electrons can be pumped off into a higher electrons shell, but it is not happy. It is excited. So when electrons is actually excited, so, uh, what actually happened then uh, the electrons at the excitation state can be moved from the lower energy level. So this is the initial energy level. Then it will be jumped to another energy level. So that is when it is excited. As soon as it gets the chance, it will release the extra energy and drop back into its ground state. So you see, when electrons move from one shell to another shell, it, it is not happy, so it is excited. So as a result of that, whenever the electrons get chance, it will release an extra energy and then drop back to its original state. So the movement of these electrons from one shell to another is what actually lead to they actually uh, generating or producing a spectra or spectrum, depending on the type of the element. So let's start with the emission spectra. So emission spectra are observed when electrons drop to lower energy levels, releasing energy. <laughs> so in the case of emission spectra, as I said from previous slides, like in this case, you see that uh, initially, Electrons is actually moved from lower energy level to higher energy level. And of course, after going to the higher energy level, it's actually when it gets a chance, it will release energy to come back to its original state. So in the case of emission spectra, it is observed when an electron is dropped, dropped to lower energy levels by releasing energy. So when you have, let's say, you have an element from, let's say, touch shell, so when the element, when electrons from the third shell is actually coming back to the first or second shell of a particular atom, so it releases energy. So as a result of that, the emission of the energy is what make the electrons drop down to a lower energy level. So that is what describes emission spectra. So emission spectra is when an energy is emitted, then electrons will move from 
higher energy levels to higher energy level. So these spectra appear as distinct lines. So this spectra appear as a distinct lines on a dark background. So you see, these are the spectra. You see, this is examples of sodium spectra. You see, they are moving in a dark background. These are the spectra, hydrogen spectra. Look at them. These are the different. So you see, the types of the spectra for each of these elements, they are different. They are not the same if you look at them. Look at the spectra of mercury. It's not the same with the spectra of calcium. It is not the same with the spectra of hydrogen and the sodium. So each and every element has its own spectra and the pattern of the emission of the spectra. So the position of these lines correspond to a specific wavelength of light emitted. So each of these lines is actually corresponding to a specific wavelength of light emitted. So that is where with the wavelength you can actually, oh, with these lines you can be able to calculate the wavelength of the emitted electrons. Then the next one is actually absorption spectra. So absorption spectra occur when atoms absorb specific wavelengths of light and this resulting the spectrum shows dark lines against a continuous spectrum. So the dark lines correspond to energy differences in electron transition. So you see, this is actually uh, the absorption spectra. So in the case of absorption spectra, it occurs when atoms absorb specific wavelengths. So whenever an atoms absorb a specific wavelength, that actually what describe the absorption spectra. And this absorption of wavelength, it results or is the resulting uh the, the resulting spectrum shows a dark line. So it will be showing dark lines against a continuous spectrum. So these lines this dark lines it correspond to energy differences in electron transitions. So ladies and gentlemen, we should understand that in the case of absorption spectrum they are actually producing a dark line. So these dark lines is actually uh, indication of the energy differences in electrons transitions. So let's actually look at the hydrogen spectrum. Let's look at the hydrogen spectrum. So you see the hydrogen spectrum is a prime example of atomic spectra. It consists of dist distinct emissions lines corresponding to electron transition. So look at it. This is a continuous spectrum and this is actually hydrogen emission spectrum. So look at the pattern here. Look at the lines. Look at the lines here. The lines of hydrogen spectrum. So of course, it consists of distinct emission lines corresponding to electron transition. So as I said, each and every element has its own unique lines. So for example, the Palma series describe visible light emissions from hydrogen uh, from hydrogen atoms. So there are a series, each of the lines has, has its own name, has its name by each and every element. So let's look at it. You see in the hydrogen spectrum, we have the following lines. So you have N1. So when you have N1, it means uh, Lehman series, and it is actually under ultraviolet light. It is under ultraviolet light. And we have, of course, Balma series, which is within visible region. And we have fashion series, which is actually near infrared. And then we have bracket series, we have Fipon series. So these are the different uh, hydrogen spectrum. These are the different series. And each of the series or each of the line spectrum has its own name. So of course, we have what you call a Rebac formula. So Rebac formula is a formula that used to calculate the wavelength of a, sp of a spectral lines in hydrogen. So it demonstrates the quantized nature of electrons energy levels. So this formula lays the groundwork for quantum mechanics in atomic theory. Like for example, this, let's actually find the formula. This lambda is the wavelength. This R is called river constant. 
and this one is the energy levels of the electrons and each of the series has it is on n value so like for example in the case of fifon series the n1 the, the n1 starts with 3 while n2 start with start with 4 so let's actually look at some calculation here like for the Valma for Lehman series n is 1 n1 is 1 and then n2 is 2 so let's look at some uh, calculation According to the uh, fashion series, N1 is 3 and N2 is equal to 4, 5. So let's look at the Fibon series. We'll see the value of N1 and N2. So you see, uh, sorry, yeah, is it, uh, is it P1 or okay, it's fashion? So fashion, let's look at the value of fashion. So N1 is 3, while N2 can be 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 7. So let's look at it. So we have N1 as 3, as we actually get from here. And then we have N2, which can be 4, 5. So therefore, the second line in the fashion series is set by putting N is equal to 2. So the N1 is equal to 3 and N2 is equal to 5. So why is it that it is 5? Because we are talking about the second line. The second line of the fashion series. If it is the third line, then we are going to use 6. So you see, this is the fashion series. So for the first line, n is equal to 4. And then for the second line, n is equal to 5. So that is why here, we are using n2 as 5. So of course, the Riba constant, which is Rh, Rh is a constant, as I said. Rh is a constant, which is called the bar constant. And the values are here. They are here. So to calculate the uh, lambda or web number, to calculate lambda or web number, and we are now going to say 1 all over lambda is equal to the Riba constant is 1096801 is equal to 1 all over n1 square minus 1 all over n2 square. So the n1 is 1 all over 3 square minus... So of course for the n2 is 5, so we have 1 all over 5 square. So we should know that always n2 is greater than n1. So after substituting the above values in the above equation, then we are going to have our web number. Web number is, of course, this v bar. V bar is actually called web number. So web number can be this. So it, it means that by taking the reciprocal of 1 all over lambda, you will get this. Or you can also get this. After all, then this is what we are going to get at the end of the calculation by substituting the above value in the equation. So uh, then the next thing is application of spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy? Spectroscopy is actually a technique that is used to analyze the composition of distinct stars and galaxy. It plays a crucial role in identifying elements in chemical samples. Assuming that we are giving samples with a junk or with uh, different elements in the samples, then of course you can be able to identify the individual elements that are present in the chemical samples. Then application extends to uh, medicine, environmental monitoring, and material sciences. So uh, we should understand that the spectroscopy is a technique that uses the uh, application of atomic spectra analyze the element or to analyze the element of the friends uh spectra in a given sample so it has so many applications in medicine in biochemistry environmental monitoring and uh, in environmental monitoring and material science so what is molecular spectra molecular spectra arise from transition in molecules rather than individual atoms so in this case in molecular spectra we are talking about molecules, not atoms. So molecular spectra is actually a spectra that arise 
from transition in molecules rather than the individual atoms. So this spectra provide information about molecular structure. It provides information about molecular structure and bonding. And we have different types of molecular spectra which include rotational, vibrational, and electronic uh, electronic spectra. So it means that in the case of the uh, molecular spectra, it is used actually in the case of molecules where you can determine or you can provide an information about molecular structure and bonding of a molecules. Like for example, this is actually a molecular spectra. So we have, this is the absorbance and this is the wavelength. So you can actually uh, plot your absorbance against wavelength for you to determine the spectral properties of the molecules. And of course, this is for the atomic absorption spectra. You see, so they are different. Look at even the from the graph. This one from a cup and this one is horizontal. So what are the techniques in spectroscopy? So spectroscopy, there are common techniques which include ultraviolet visible light infrared spectroscopy uh, techniques, then NMR spectroscopy. So all these, there are different techniques.